Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us. This is Matthew Sweezy, and uh, we're going to run through uh, a little presentation talking about automating dynamic experiences. And really, what I want you guys to kind of understand is this should be a sustainable advantage. Content marketing is a sustainable advantage, but many times we face this problem of we have way too much content. We always constantly feel the need to create more content. Let's talk about a different way to solve that problem as rather than creating more content, a better way of accurately serving the content that we currently create, and that would be a, a essentially dynamic content. Just a little quick blurb about myself. I'm the principal of marketing insights at salesforce.com. I do a lot of speaking and writing. The last book I wrote was Marketing Automation for Dummies, and I've got a new book coming out in 2016. Uh, I can tell you about that later on. But let's just uh, really quickly dive into this. We've got this idea of digital discovery, and really what I want you to understand on this is the power that everyone has in the palm of their hands by using the Internet. And because we've got so much power at our hands, it changes the way that we as consumers want things and view things. Um, we're actually in front of a screen 12 hours a day. And, and think about this. We are no longer just in front of a screen. We're engaging with things constantly, and all these experiences are happening, and we're remembering them. And no longer are we as a company just judged against our competitors, but we're judged against a whole host of things. Um, you know, the, the way we look at ad impressions, it used to be about 5,000 ad impressions is, uh, per day, is what people would say is in the modern digital world is about the, the level of ad noise. But when you really boil it down, the advertising noise is not the noise that we are having to compete against. If you think about this, every time that you log on to Facebook, you have somewhere between 1,500 and 15,000 posts waiting on you in your Facebook queue. And so you say, as a business, how can I then break through that noise, um, which is, is now ubiquitous? And the reason it's ubiquitous is because it's the first time in history that anybody has the ability to create, distribute, and consume content, and so that everyone is now creating content a lot of the noise that we have to overcome doesn't even come from other businesses. It's just, uh, you know, things from other people. And so, you know, you've got a bunch of different experiences. And, and this is something similar to what you guys probably see in your Facebook feed as well. This popped up in my Facebook feed a couple of days ago. And it's, a you know, a nice little short, cute video of a little pug licking an ice cream cone. And then the owner switches the ice cream cone to the big dog and as opposed to licking it, he just eats the entire cone in one bite. You know, it's super cute, and that's why it's got about 10 million views. But this is what we're having to compete against, right? So when we talk about this idea of content marketing and distributing content, you know, we need to first understand what our actual competition is in content, right? And, and like I said, you're competing against all the experiences, and experience is the thing I really want to focus in on our short period of time today, right? It's the experience, and it is, that is at the heart of things, right? So think about this in a super basic term. Right. If you imagine a person and you split them in half, not physically, that would be a bad thing, but you split them in half and you say, all right, there are the things that I can see and the things that I can't see. So every time I run a campaign to them, the things I can see are clicks, downloads, impressions. The things I can't see, there's only three things that are possibility. I can, cannot see how that experience was, and that experience is going to be one of three things, either a positive experience, null, has no effect, or a negative experience. And that's at the heart of what content really should be looking at. And why is this important? It's because when you have that positive experience, the halo effect kicks in. And the halo effect is the, is the, the basis for the colloquialism of why first impressions are so critical. It's because the halo is actually a psychological term that will precondition you to then have all of your future uh, engagements uh, clouded by that initial engagement. So if you have a positive first impression, your mind will then focus all future impressions in a positive light, uh, conversely negative first impressions and so on. And this is important because of the experience, right? And this is also gets really important when you start talking about, you know, different types of online engagement, specifically talking about uh, the online digital e-commerce world. Uh, so here's some fascinating things about this e-commerce. First off, 40% of the population shops one time per month in the year 2013 to 2014, right? Uh, excuse me, that was 40% shops at least once a month, 28% shop once a week. I personally shop a whole lot more than that because I have Amazon Prime, uh, and they've got my number, and it is awesome, right? Now, this number is expected to increase by 15.5% going forward into 2015, right? So what we need to think about this are a couple of the keys 
to automating this experience and how we can really, um, you know, put the correct content in front of the correct people for the right kind of conversion at the right time. The first thing we need to understand about this is it's going to take a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts and pieces behind the scenes. And the first thing that we have to understand is we have to have full visibility and full knowledge. Information is, is the critical piece here. And information is not just the information that you may know. It also may be information that other people know about people, which would be third party, and then your information would be first party. It all needs to be together in a single place for a single point of view so that things can get uh, derived from that information and added to that information very easily. And this will give you what we would call a single point of view or a single customer view um, in, in your organization. When you have that, that is then how you then know that is the record that you use for automating these dynamic experiences. And the reason, I haven't said why they need to be dynamic, but we'll, we'll get to that in just a second. Um, and really, when you have all of this information pulled in one place, it gives you this level of intelligence. And this is just the basic definition of intelligence, but this is the definition of intelligence I want you guys to think about. Right? When you have that single point of view, you have the level of marketing intelligence or the ability to execute relevant marketing campaigns to a single person in real time. This is where the dynamic aspect comes in. Think about how many people you have and how many interactions you have to have. And you could, you know, there's, there's a number called Dunbar's number, and this is a, a mathematical equation which will essentially determine how many relationships a human can maintain on their own. Right, and that average is somewhere around 200 and 250. If you look at your marketing team, let's say you have a marketing team of 10 people, 10 times, um, you know, 250 only gets you to about 2,500 people that your team could effectively manage a relationship on. Um, so if you think about that, Dunbar's number kind of puts a limit as to scaling human relationships, and really relationships are the reason people buy, they're one of those things that you can't see or the metric. But now if you understand that dynamic or the ability to take that single customer view that you've created and then dynamically know exactly what should happen to that person at, at a specific point in time, then that allows that number to then scale. And that is marketing intelligence. It's how do you use this data to infinitely scale relationships um, and content is the way that we're going to do that. And here's just a nice little quote from um, one of the, the head of customer experience for Room & Board talking about really the end goal is to present the customer with relevant content. And, and we're going to talk about how we relevantly do that. And also just, you know, a quick screen. It, it's got to be across all channels at all time. And the two channels we're going to focus on mainly right now are going to be email and your website. Because these are the two things that you own and that you have the most control over. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is dynamic has a lot of different things. Dynamic could be programmed, um, but really the height or the epitome of dynamic is predictive. And this would say, all right, predictive allows for proactive things to happen. Traditionally, dynamic is reactive, but proactive could say, I know what this person is most likely to enjoy or find interesting, and then you can actually do that. Predictive is also personal based off of that third-party data that you may have. Um, so it can get into some pretty cool realms. This is how it's being used by a couple of very big brands to kind of give you some, some insight. Diesel is using predictive content to make sure that the experiences people have with their brand are hyper-personal and proactive because they know what they're most likely to want next. From the bottom line aspect, what this is allowed to do is increase their revenue by 15%. Right. Journeys is the next iteration on this, and journeys go into the idea and saying, all right, we know that you can have predictive content, meaning you can serve the, the most likely thing they are to engage with at the most likely point in time, but now let's talk about then how do we then design how those you know, interactions coincide together over a long period of time or a journey. Um, so here's another great example of a journey that is happening. So going back to Room and Board, any time that you visit the Room and Board website and you then start to engage or buy something, they then look at what is a relevant journey for this person right now. So if you start to buy something for a bedroom, right, they can obtain a lot of information about you, not only third party such as who is this person, what are their interest profiles, but then first party, what are you doing on their site? what types of products are you looking at that can designate the style preferences that you have. 
you know, then if then they take it a step further. Well, if they are looking at veteran furniture, we know the style they have, we know their demographic, as well as we know they are redesigning their bedroom, right? So what is and what is relevant to them right now is most likely bedroom furniture that fit that same look and feel of things that they previously looked at. So now they can design a journey around that person, helping them reach that purpose that they have. Remember, the, the goal here is not just to get the content in their hands and just to push product. The goal is to help them fulfill their purpose and reach their goal. And their purpose is probably to feel good about their decisions and to feel good about the room that they eventually live in. Uh, and so that's kind of the purpose. And they're helping meet that purpose through the idea of journey. Here are just some quick numbers. When you start looking at journeys and you start looking at predictive, here are the things that you can start to see, right? First off, revenue lift by a significant margin of 10%. Click-through rate in emails by 35%. That is because the content that you are putting in those emails is dynamically based off of what we think the best thing that's going to happen or what you program and the best thing that's going to happen. And then you can also see, you know, other financial measures and metrics. And kind of when you really look at this and boil it all down, what you get into is the idea that you create a lot of content, but it is serving that content in effective ways that makes things different. And I'll kind of expand on that real quick because I didn't hit on this topic and wanted to uh, a second or two ago. It is when we go back, and let me go back to that page, when we go back to this website, um, so I want you to think about a concept right here. So let's talk about the actual content that is being displayed on this website because that's something I, I forgot to talk about. When someone lands on the website, right, the average person, and I want you to do a basic math in your head. First off, how many web pages do you have on your website? Write that down. How many pages on average does a person go to? And then how many perc what percentage of the, the, those pages have content on them? And so what you're likely to end up with is you probably have hundreds or thousands of pages. I'd say probably 85 to 90 percent of those pages have content, but on average, a person may go to two to four pages. The average is 1.7 on a B2B website, and a B2C website is going to range in terms of what type of a property it is. But what we can see is there is a lot of pages that people are not going to. So our traditional mindset is to say, let's look at a macro tracking tool and try to design the best flow through our website possible. And so you would say, all right, I then am going to move these things around here to make sure that a lot of people move from this page to the next page. That is flawed logic in the future when you start thinking of dynamic content. What you should think about is how do I create a zero-click website or how do I create an experience where the moment a person comes to my property, wherever it may be, it shows them exactly the experience and fulfills the purpose they're wanting fulfilled at that moment or at that point in time. And that is really the power. And so when you are able to do that, you are able to instantly drive people to the thing that they want, hence getting them that content that you know they need, but most likely they would never be able to find on your website if it was a static website. So that's really kind of the power of this idea of the dynamic experience, both in terms of email, it's doing that exact same thing, and it's saying, we know we're going to send an email on Wednesday. What goes in that email would be dynamic based off of what they've done recently or predictive things that you might predicts that they would want in the future, kind of helping them see things they may not even know. And then the exact same idea on your website um, by being able to dynamically give that content and display that content uh, in a way which makes it very easy and frictionless for them to consume, hence consuming more, having a better brand experience, and then kind of moving everything forward. Uh, and then, you know, finally concluding on the rest of those ideas, uh, this all really kind of goes into you need to have all of your data connected because all of these experiences are going to happen on different channels uh, or different departments inside of your organization. You need to make sure all of that data ends up and lives on one central record. That is the only way that you will be able to drive these dynamic experiences correctly because just as well as you can drive dynamic experiences and drive positive results, if you do it incorrectly, you will drive the exact opposite results. Um, and then finally, it's, it's once again remembering that you also then need to be able to execute cross-channel for the same thing. Uh, and then finally, it's just the idea of proactive selling allows you to stay relevant without being invasive. 
right? It's all about how do you build that relationship with content, and this really provides a new uh, way to look at content, uh, both in terms of how it's utilized, how we value it, and then how we deliver it to the customer. So it's not that we need to constantly churn out content, it's really shifting the focus to how do we effectively deliver the right content to the right person at the right time, and the answer to do that is dynamic experiences. Uh, so with that, I'm going to say thank you guys so much for, uh, for attending and sharing in on this, and I uh, hope to catch up with you guys sometime soon. Have a great day.